we have some amazing natural tools to address fungus. So this brings us to treatment step two. First, diet and lifestyle. Second, probiotics. 2023 randomized control trial found that for vaginal candida, probiotics were as effective as the antifungal medication fluconazole. In fact, in that conversation with Dr. Satish Rao, his drug of choice for CFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, was fluconazole. So very interesting to see, according to this randomized control trial, that probiotics were as effective as fluconazole. There's other similar data. A 2019 meta-analysis of eight randomized control trials in patients with oral candida found success with probiotics, whether it was a blend of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium or a Saccharomyces boulardii. And to quote, we are confident in declaring that probiotics can have a beneficial effect on reducing oral candida counts. So pretty remarkable, the power of probiotics. And I just want to quickly share with you that probiotics do not only have antifungal action, probably obvious, but just to make sure to state it, this 2023 meta-analysis found that probiotics reduce leaky gut as measured by zonulin or by LPS, reduce inflammatory markers, and reduce dysbiosis. This is relevant when we come back to this concept, this paradigm of ecosystem modulation. I feel probiotic has such merit because of the antifungal, antibacterial, anti-leaky gut, anti-inflammatory, and anti-dysbiosis impact. And this is why I'm so keen on probiotics because of the pleiotrophic effects. They'll positively modulate multiple different facets of your gut. And I'll just put up on the visuals here briefly our meta protocol. We discussed this ad nauseum on other, so I don't want to belabor the point here, but you're essentially looking at anywhere between two to 50 billion CFU per day of a probiotic for a trial period of two to three months. And you can use a blend of lactobacillus and bifidobacterium, or you can use a healthy fungus, Saccharomyces boulardii. Remember that if you have fungus, you can fight fungus with fungus, which is why Saccharomyces boulardii was one of the probiotics found to resolve and treat successfully candida. And then the third type of probiotic is a soil-based probiotic. Okay, what is the third element? Well, the third element, I guess a little pun not intended there, is an elemental diet. An elemental diet is a hypoallergenic liquid meal replacement. The most novel component of an elemental diet, in my view, is that it absorbs in the first two to three feet of the small intestine, remembering that the small intestine is 22 feet. So if your intestine is inflamed, irritated, has overgrowth, if you can give it a, a rest with an elemental diet, if you can absorb the solution the first two to three feet and the remaining 19 feet don't have to work, that can be very regenerative. Now we don't have really much research at all on the treatment of fungus with an elemental diet. I would be cautious in, in one population, and that is if you have oral thrush, oral candida, it might be a problem for you because of the maltodextrin in the solution. Outside of that one population, if it's digestive that you're worried about, I've speculated that because the formula absorbs in the first two to three feet, and we know this leads to reductions in bowel disease, reductions in inflammation, improvements in SIBO, it would stand to reason that it would also help fungus. And because of this, I'm really excited to share this study with you that we just came across. It was published in 2019. 61 children with inflammatory bowel disease were given either biologic therapy, immunosuppression, or an elemental diet. After two to four weeks, they found first and foremost decreased disease activity. But secondly, they found a small but non-significant decrease in candida levels. I want to be careful again to say this was not significant, but if nothing else, this shows us we can reduce inflammation and disease activity, improve symptoms, without causing any overgrowth in candida. And this is what we see sort of intonated in a 2017 systematic review. 
The bowel rest induced by the elemental diet may induce mucosal healing by limiting the activity of potentially pathogenic microbes. So this concept of rest, and this is one of the reasons why I have found, and many people anecdotally, have found elemental diets to be so helpful. And there's a lot of research in inflammatory bowel disease showing, again, reduced disease activity and reduced inflammation. The fourth step in treating candida would be antimicrobials. These are herbs or medications that are antifungal, and in many cases, the herbals are antifungal, antiparasitic, and antibacterial, which is why I favor herbs. Why don't we do these first? Because the concept of ecosystem modulation is paramount. If you do not have these positive forces modulating the ecosystem, and you just zap someone with antimicrobials, the likelihood that the ecosystem is gonna drift back to that imbalance in my view, is quite high. So we want to prime the system, so to speak, and have all these healthy inputs, diet, lifestyle, probiotics, potentially rest with the elemental diet, priming the system for balance. And then if you need that last nudge toward balance, toward healing, this is when in my view and my clinical experience has really bored this out, the best time to integrate antimicrobials is then. So enter a 2015 randomized control trial. They gave subjects either 1,500 milligrams of garlic tablets, or they gave them fluconazole. This is for vaginal candida. And they found nearly identical results in the garlic group as compared to the fluconazole group, 60% as compared to 71%. So pretty amazing, again, seeing another trial showing us that natural agents, whether it be probiotics or in this case, garlic tablets, are about as effective as the antifungal medication fluconazole. Now, routinely what I've used and many in the field will use is a blend of various antimicrobials. So this might include something like oregano, berberine, black walnut, artemisinin, peppermint, uva ursi, caprylic acid. And we do have currently under peer review, a interventional trial we did in office documenting that these herbal blends can successfully treat SIBO. There's also a study from back in 2014 by Jerry Mullins, and he found equivalence in treating SIBO with rifaximin, the antibiotic, as compared to a different herbal blend. So even though there's really not any, as, as I have been able to find, clinical trials, other than the one with garlic, using these herbal blends, we see results at least emerging in the treatment of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And when understanding that the fungus and the bacteria tend to overgrow together, I think it's reasonable to conclude that what's worked for SIBO, bacterial overgrowth, will likely also work for CFO, fungal, or candidal overgrowth. That all being said, the research consensus here is these various natural compounds do have antifungal properties, but there's no good data in rigorous clinical trials for gastrointestinal fungus. So it is an inference that we're drawing. There's certainly a lot of anecdotal reporting of people experiencing benefit, and my personal and clinical experience reinforces this. However, if you really wanted to use what there's the best, the, the most evidence for, then fluconazole or an istatin are options. Again, bearing in mind, in the small handful of studies that have compared either probiotics or garlic to fluconazole, we see very similar results. So then in recap of the treatment hierarchy, and by the way, you wanna take these one step at a time because ideally one step improves your symptoms and therefore should be rebalancing your gut. But the first is diet and lifestyle. Be careful not to mistakenly think you have to go low carb because not only does this not appear to be necessary, and if you feel good on low carb and function better on low carb, totally fine, right? I just wanna be careful that you don't pigeonhole yourself into low carb forever, and you also don't stress yourself out. And every time you have anything with carbs, you're gonna have an apple, you're gonna have some blueberries, you're gonna have some rice, you're gonna have some potatoes. 
you think you're doing harm because I don't think the evidence supports that. As an antidote to stress, consider time in nature and also remember the importance of exercise as it pertains to diet and lifestyle. And specifically on diet, I think any diet that is going to limit processed food, as a prior study indicated, should be sufficient. Two, probiotics. Three, reset and rest with the elemental diet. And then four, either herbal antimicrobials or a prescription. So in summary, candida or fungus can overgrow and cause both imbalances and symptoms, usually doing so along with bacteria. Remember the importance of modulating the entire ecosystem, the limitations of testing, and that none of these things will work for everyone all the time. So trial them one step at a time, listening to your body and making adjustments along the way. All right, guys. Well, again, I hope this helps. I hope you will comment and I hope you will share this video with one person you think it can help. Thank you.